So here is a drawing that you'll be frequently given in, in problems like this. And but what you have is like a cable car or some kind of a ski lift or something. And you start from the ground and the ski lift goes along the wire up to the top of the mountain. Of course, you're going to ski down the other side. And this is what you have. The angle that the wire makes with the ground is 21 degrees. The distance from the start to the base of the mountain over here is 1.2 kilometers and the angle between the slope of this mountain and the ground is 65 degrees. And the question is, how far does the cable car travel from start to finish? How far does the cable car travel? So you got to think about that for a second. What does it mean? It means how far does it travel along that wire, right? It's not asking how far it travels along the ground, it's asking how far does it travel, period. So it has to go all the way the length of this wire. So what we're really trying to find is how long this wire really is. And a lot of students will look at this and have no idea where to start because it just looks complicated. It's a mountain, it's slanted, there's angles everywhere. How do we find this? Well, the first step in any word problem, my advice, is to redraw the problem. Uh, draw a clean, nice triangle with all the information and then look at law of sines, law of cosines and see if you have enough information to solve it. And you will. I mean, there's no doubt about that. So we just need to practice that. So let's do that. We're going to get rid of the mountain and all this other stuff and draw it like a real triangle would look in, you know, in a, in a trig or a geometry class. So here we're going up like this. Uh, it slants down here and then here it is because this is one side of the triangle, this is one side, and this is one side of the triangle. Okay. Now let's start labeling some stuff. Let's call this side A. We're trying to find A. That's all we care about. If we can figure out any way to find A, we will. Now, the angle that's opposite A, we're going to call alpha, right? And also notice that what's given to us in the drawing, not this angle, but the angle from here to the ground is 65 degrees, like that. Now also, notice that, I'm going to call it gamma, is 21 degrees. What goes with gamma? That's C. So this is side C. And you could say, let me switch colors just to make it totally clear. You could say that B is 1.2 kilometers, because that's what's given in the problem, and that this is angle beta up here. So I'm trying to draw you know, the colors to help you. So I tried to use colors here. The gamma goes with the C, the purple goes with the purple, the red goes with the red, all right? So ultimately we want to figure out what this is. So let's just, let's just go, for the, go for the glory right now and see if we can figure it out. So what we have is A, over the sine of the angle opposite, which is sine of alpha, okay, is equal to, and I can set it to whatever I want, but since I know what side B is, let's just go ahead and set it to, to B, which is B over sine of, what's the angle opposite? Sine of beta. So let's see what I can actually do here. I don't know what A is. I don't know what alpha is, so I have to leave it like that. B I know is 1.2, and Beta, I really don't know what that is either. So although I'm able to use law of signs, I am not able to make much progress because I don't know what A is, that's what I'm trying to find. I don't know what alpha is and I don't know what beta is. So I kind of think I'm a little stuck. So just kind of go off to the side. You know that you need to supply that information and let's go figure out what can help us. So the first leg of our journey takes us over here to alpha, all right? I, ha I don't know what alpha is, but I know that the angle from the other side down to kind of like the horizontal here, ground, if I, if I extend the triangle out this way, is 65 degrees. Now from geometry, you should know that anytime you have an, a, an angle that goes like this, it's 180 degrees. So this entire angle from this all the way over is 180 degrees. So that means, let me switch colors, that means that alpha must be 180 minus 65. That's what that angle has to be. So alpha, 180 minus 65, is 115 degrees. So boom, I know what alpha is now. All right? I know what alpha is now. In fact, I can just kind of erase that and just put 115 there to kind of remind myself that I actually know that. So all I need now is to know what beta is. So let's go ahead and erase this, and we'll say alpha is equal to 115. So I know this angle, I know this angle, the only angle I don't know is that one, and I just told you a minute ago, all triangles have 180 degrees uh, inside. So beta is equal to 180 
minus the 21 minus the 115. So beta should be a fairly small angle. 180 minus 21 minus 115 gives me 44 degrees. That's the angle up there, 44 degrees. And if I go right over here to what I was doing a minute ago, I take away the unknown and I put 44 in. Now I have everything needed to solve this problem. So A over, what is sine of 115 degrees? 0 0.91. I have 1.2 up here. What is sine of 44 degrees? 0 0.69. So I'll change colors just to kind of break it up a little bit. On the left, we'll just stay with A over 0 0.91. And over here, 1.2 over 0.69 is 1.73. And so to find A, we just multiply by 0.91. So A is equal to this times this, which is 1.6 kilometers. 1.6 kilometers. Now just see if it kind of makes sense, 1.6. So we're saying 1.6 kilometers. If this is 1.2 to the base of the mountain, then it kind of makes sense that it should be a little bit more than that, the slant angle. So again, there's multiple steps here. Rarely in a law of science problem will you just plug it in and get the answer. You'll probably have to find some other info. We look at the triangle, we realize we need to know the angles here to help us calculate things. And uh, so, we, in fact, we, the way we set it up, we needed alpha and beta. So the way we found alpha was by subtracting 180 from this given angle here to get this. We found, we found B, beta was to do 180 minus the interior angles of the triangle that gives us this. Law of sines is A over opposite angle sine equals B over opposite angle sine. Then we had all of the information needed to solve for A, which gave us 1.6 kilometers. All right, for our next problem, we're going to have another drawing here. So let's just go ahead and draw it here. Here we have a triangle that looks something like this. But at the top of this triangle, we're going to kind of draw sort of a hot air balloon. This is my best impression of a hot air balloon. You have to forgive that. And what we're given here is the base of this guy is 8.4 kilometers. So we have two strings, basically. We have two strings. One string is tied to the hot air balloon. Here's another string tied to this hot air balloon. The other piece of information that we're given is that this angle here is 24 degrees and 10 minutes. And I'll explain what the, 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 the minutes part mean here in a second. This is given as 47 degrees in 40 minutes, right? And the question is, what is the height of this balloon above the ground, above the ground? The height of the balloon above the ground is not this length. It's not this length. The height above the ground is the vertical length directly down. So that's what we're trying to find. And also, we're given these goofy angles, 24 degrees, 10 minutes. What does that mean? It's, uh, it's something you don't use too much if you deal with radians all the time, but basically you have 360 degrees in a circle, right? Every degree is further broken down into minutes and seconds. And you don't always use this, but in this case we're given that this is 24 degrees, 10 minutes. What there is is there's 60 minutes in a degree. It's very much like a clock, right? You have the, the hours that go around. Every hour is 60 minutes. Every minute is 60 seconds. Same thing with degrees. Every degree is broken into 60 minutes, every minute is 60 seconds. The reason that it's a little confusing is because it sounds like time. Like When you see 10 minutes of, of, of uh, angle, it doesn't mean it's like time. It's just another word used to describe, to split it up into, into a uh, into smaller number of pieces. So the only thing you really need to know is that every degree is broken up into 60 minutes. Um, but you can't really take sine and cosine of these angles too easily. So what I'm going to recommend you always do is to do some conversions at first. How would you convert 24 degrees 10 minutes into just regular old degrees? Well, it's going to be 24 plus 10 minutes. I told you there were 60 minutes in every degree, so this is 10 over 60. This is the way you break it down, right? Uh, so what you do is take 24 plus 10 over 60 and what you'll get is 24.17 degrees. You ultimately want to convert everything to a decimal because that's going to be easier to take sine and cosine in your calculator. For the other guy, 47 degrees 40 minutes is just 47 plus, since, since there's 60 minutes in every degree, this is a fraction, fractional part, 40 over 60. This is expressing the fraction of a degree that this represents. 
right? So if you do this, and then you'll get 47.67 degrees. And now that we've got it all converted, we can very easily go back up here and say, okay, then this angle, just to kind of rewrite everything, is 47.67 degrees. And this angle, to rewrite everything, is 24.17 degrees. That's gonna be much easier to work with. Now, there's many, many ways to go about this. I mean, there really is. I mean, you could find, do a lot of signs first, different sides, you could choose different sides than I'm going to choose, you could do all kinds of things. But ultimately, what you need to do is find everything you can about this triangle so that at the end of the day, you can find this vertical height here, which is what I'm trying to find out, how high that balloon is above the ground. So let me redraw this triangle. I'm gonna draw it a little bit smaller and I'm gonna draw it over here to the side because it's not that important to be huge, but I want to be able to label some things. So this is 24.17 degrees here. This is 47.67 degrees in that corner, right? And let's label some sides. We know that this is, I'm gonna call it A is equal to 8.4. Right, and I don't know what alpha is yet, so I'm gonna label it alpha. And I'm gonna call this side B, and I'm gonna call this side C. And I know, I know that those, what those angles are. And notice, however, everything I've labeled on here, I'm not actually trying to find any, any of this in the end result of the problem. I really wanna know how high it is, but we're going to find out that you need to know all that stuff to calculate that. So, what can I find? What can I find? Well, I know two of these angles, so I know I can get alpha. Alpha is 180 degrees, which is how many degrees in every triangle, minus 24.17 minus 47.67. So alpha is guaranteed to be 108.16 degrees, 108.16 degrees. And so I can actually erase that if I want and put 108.6. Let's kind of keep it, keep it simple like that. All right, actually it's 0 0.16, 1, 6, that top angle. So I know all the angles. So let's go ahead and try to find sides B and C, and then I'll show you how you can get to the end of the problem uh, uh, once, we get, once we get that. So let's do that. Let's use law of sines. So what we know is A over sine of alpha is equal to B over sine beta. A is given by 8.4. Sine of alpha is sine of 108.16. B is what I'm trying to find. Sine of B, which is the opposite angle, is 47.67. So on the left-hand side, once you take the sine and you divide 8.4 by that, you get 8.84. And on the right, you get B over, you take the sine of this number here, you get 0 0.74. So B, you get by multiplying these numbers together, which is 6.54. 6.54. All right, now let me go here and find what C is, and then we'll wrap up the problem. To find C, we need to use law of sines again. And there's many ways I can do it. I'm gonna choose to do A over sine alpha is equal to C over sine gamma. Let me change the colors just to break it up a little bit. Everything on the left remains the same because I just did that. So it'll be 8.4 over sine 108.6. C over sine of gamma, which is the opposite angle, 24.17. On the left-hand side, you do this, you'll get 8.84 again. And on the right-hand side, actually this is sine of that, sine of 24.17. When you take the sine of that number, you'll get 0 0.41. So at the end of the day, C is going to be equal to the product, the multiplication of these two things, 3.62 kilometers. All right. So we found everything there is to know about this triangle. We know uh, all of the angles inside, and we know all of the lengths of all of the sides. So, well, how do we find out the final answer? What is the height above the ground? Let me move over to this other board here and draw a quick picture to show you that. We'll, we'll kind of draw it a little bit bigger. Here's the situation we have. What we're really trying to find is this height right here. So I'm gonna call that H. 
I'm going to call that height h because that's what I'm trying to find. Now notice that when I draw it from the top here, this becomes a right triangle, right? That becomes a right triangle. So what do I know? That's going to help me, I think. I know, I know everything, but b is 6.54, so this is 6.54. I know the length of this bottom, but I don't, that's not going to help me too much. c, which is the other side, 3.62. This angle down here is 24.17. All right. Now, think about this for a second. Even though I drew the whole triangle, you don't even really need this stuff over here. Just cover that up. This is a right triangle, right? I know the angle, and this is a hypotenuse of this guy. So this is 6.54. Think back to the definition of sine, cosine, and tangent, right? The sine of this angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's what the sine is equal to. Anytime you have the sine of an angle, it's the opposite side of the triangle over the hypotenuse. And that works for right triangles, right? So this is the hypotenuse of this right triangle that I don't know, but I do know the angle. So ultimately, the sine of the angle here, 24.17, is equal to the opposite side, which is h, over 6.54. That's it. Now all you have to do is find h. Sine of 24.17 is 0 0.41. h over 6.54. To find h, you just multiply this times this to get it over to the one side. 2.68 kilometers. 2.68 kilometers. It's always good to do a sanity check. It makes sense that this height should be shorter than this side by a little bit. And it should be shorter than this side by a lot. So that kind of makes sense. So 2.68 kilometers. So it's not always so, so straightforward that, okay, you're just going to do law of sine to get the answer. Sometimes you have to find everything you can about a triangle and then use some other part of trigonometry to find the final answer. In this case, we were given this guy, and we had the other uh, you know, gotcha of having the degrees and minutes, so we converted to decimal first. Then we found this top angle by subtraction from 180. We had all of the angles. Okay, we knew one of the sides, so we could use law of sines to find the other side, B. We use law of sines again to find the other side, C. So we knew all of the sides and all of the angles. And then once you redraw it, you realize, once you write everything down, that you know what? This is a right triangle. I'm trying to find the opposite side here of this right triangle. Then you use the definition of the sine of the angle to pull that off. So in this section and in the last section, we've covered the law of sines. And you can see this very powerful because it applies to all triangles. Uh, and so you'll find out that sometimes it's better to use law of sines because it's easier. And in the next section, we'll, we'll learn about law of cosines. And sometimes you'll find that it's a little bit easier to deal with the law of cosines. So uh, make sure you understand these problems. Make sure that you not only kind of get it, but that you can solve them all yourself. Work these guys again. And then follow me on to the next few sections where we'll talk about the law of cosines and you'll see how useful those guys are as well. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.